This morning I want to begin developing the shadows and um, continuing to develop the form. Get closer to the, to the actual values and, and uh, colors of my horse and, and sleigh. Uh, the front of the sleigh and the side of the sleigh are very close in value right now. And the, in the photograph on the day that I was at the sleigh rally, the, the front of the sleigh was um, in quite a bit of shadow compared to the side of the, of the sleigh. So I want to differ differentiate the two of them and I want to start to develop the, the contours of that S-shaped front of the sleigh. And also the, the horse, the, the coat of the horse is uh, quite a bit lighter in, in value in my painting than, um, than it is in the photographs. So I want to try to get that a little closer and I'd like to try to get it a little more of a roan color. So I'm going to be using a couple of, um, of tools here. This is my, my secondary palette with bright colors um, and uh, the, the reds especially are, are a little hard to differentiate. Uh, the greens um, to, to some extent the same is true and I suppose the yellows too. Um, so I've got a couple of tools that I use to, to help me keep track of what's what and one of them is a map that I created of the of this palette which um, identifies the colors in, in each well by name so that I can know precisely what color I'm, I'm using at any given time. Those correspond with the wells in my palette and uh, of course in order for all of this to work I have to be fairly consistent in where I put my paints as I as I replace them. I've, I've uh, made some adjustments especially in the greens. This, this well here has two different greens in it and I, yeah, I actually show two greens in my in my map. Uh, so that's that's one important tool the the map that I've created. Um, this is I've got it on my computer screen it's a it's a an illustrator Adobe Illustrator file um, I can modify it if I need to but so far I haven't needed to and then the other important tool that I'm going to be using is um, these swatches I have created swatches of every color in my palette Um, and these are just the, the tube paint right here. This is mixed with water to create a, a graded wash. And at the top, um, it's mixed with black or neutral tint actually. So it gives me a range of, of values and colors that I can get out of any particular tube color. So between those two, I should be able to come up with a plan for the horse's coat and the, the shadow areas and, and the highlights on the sleigh. Comparing my paint swatches with my photograph, I've come up with several colors that could work well. I don't, I, none of, no color is a perfect match. And of course, um, there's, there's the local color and then there's the color that's affected by light and shadow. So there is no single color that's ever gonna work for, for just about anything when there is a play of light and shadow on it. So um, I've got these three reds bright red, Windsor red, and cadmium red, which I think will work pretty pretty nicely on the sleigh. And I've got these five browns, sepia, Van Dyke brown, burn umber, alizarin crimson, which is actually a red, and Indian red, which is a brown red, kind of a brick red. I think those together will work quite nicely on the on the horse and I think that I may end up using some of these colors on the sleigh as well because all three of these reds are pretty bright and there are some uh, some darker more um, desaturated reds in the sleigh and the shadows 
So I think that the burnt umber, uh, the alizarin crimson certainly, possibly the Union Red, those are likely to work quite well in the shadows of the sleigh as well. So I've selected the colors that I'm going to use to, to um, paint the, the shading and to get the, the horse's coat closer to, to what I'm actually seeing in the photograph, which is quite a bit redder than what I've got. I think I'd also like to paint this, this little tiara that the, the horse is wearing on its, on its um, brow band. It's brown with some highlights. So I think I will start with my burnt umber. It's quite close to the color of the, of the horse's coat. And maybe a little darker. Try dropping a little bit of sepia in there. That's good for starters. As long as I'm in that zone, I think I will darken up the mane a little bit. And do I want to? No, I think I'll leave it alone for now because I think I'd like to, to add the texture of the mane. Um, so, I've got a range of colors that could all contribute. Burnt umber I've already used. I don't have burnt sienna here, but I've already used burnt sienna and I used a little bit of yellow ochre. I think this, there's quite an orangey area right in here. I think I will put a little bit more yellow ochre in there and then let what I've done on the horse dry and come back to it after I've worked on the on the sleigh a little bit. Kind of like that. I think I will add a little bit of yellow ochre in a few other places where there's a particularly warm glow. All right, let's leave that alone for the moment and tackle the sleigh. This area of the sleigh has quite a lot of, actually that whole front S-curve has, has a lot of horizontal bands that um, together help to define the shape and um, and make the, the paint, the, the enamel look very, very shiny. Um, right up at the top, there's a kind of a brownish shadow. I'm going to start out by putting a little bit of, bit of burnt umber in there. Being careful to stay out of the wet paint on the horse. Fender is tipped up a little bit. All right, that's maybe a little too brown. Let's try putting a little bit of, let's try a Windsor red. Alright, 
Once again, that's too brown. Try some alizarin crimson. That's a nice deep red. There's some uh, complicated lines, sort of parallel lines, running right between these two areas of shadow. Using my liner. up a little bit of the pool of paint. I'm going to try a little bit of bright red. Bright red is a, the name of a tube color, not not just a a description. That is kind of orangey. I like that. This area of the sleigh is catching a lot of reflected light off the off the snow. Same color. There's one area right near the bottom of the of the sleigh that's actually quite white from reflections off the snow. So I'm going to try to reclaim a little bit of that. I'm using my my number two scrubber brush and water from the clean side of my Reservoir. I want to try to be careful not to pull the paint out across the line that I worked hard to make as straight as possible earlier on. That's quite nice. This here in particular that that lifted nicely. So some pigments lift very readily and others don't lift well at all. The phthalo colors are, are among the worst for, for not lifting. They're highly staining. Um, so if you use any of the phthalo colors you will be severely restricted in the amount of 
lifting you'll be able to do. On the other hand, earth colors, which I use a lot of, um, lift very easily. And uh, the cadmium colors are, are um, lend themselves well to, to lifting. So um, for the most part, the colors that I use most um, are good candidates for, for lifting, which is one of the reasons that I like them because I do a lot of lift. All right, so let's uh, move away from the sleigh for the moment. The beans of reflections are a little overstated, uh, but I think that that's a good place to start. For one thing, it's it, um, if you over suggest, as I've done here, um, you can easily push it back by just floating a a wash of clear water over it, or you can glaze another color on top of it, which will help to unify it. So let's see what we can do about the horse. I kind of like the Indian red compared to to the the color of the of the horse's coat. Unfortunately, I've got a, a tube of Indian red here, and I had a terrible time trying to get the, the the cap off it yesterday, and I finally did only to discover that it's sort of uh, petrified inside the, the tube. Doesn't mean that I can't use it, it just means that it's I can't put it on my palette. What I'll have to do instead is to work down into the, the opening of the tube with my brush to um, reactivate the, the solidified pigment that's down in the tube and um, work up enough of a pool that I can then apply it to my painting. Not exactly convenient and it doesn't lend itself particularly well to, to mixing on the palette, but um, for glazing I think it'll work okay. It's just uh, not quite what I had planned. helped to unify the, the color of the horse a little bit and got it to be to a, a much warmer temperature than it was before, which I think is moving in the right direction. Probably a little too orange. Let's try floating a little bit of, that was raw sienna. I'm gonna try introducing a little bit of burnt sienna. By doing this when the previous wash is still damp, it uh, allows the, the paint to, um, to flow and uh, helps to avoid hard edges. Sometimes hard edges are a good thing, but in this case I don't think I really want hard edges. Instead, I want to kind of create a blush, and this is working quite nicely.
definitely moving in the right direction. I think I will try floating a little bit more of the burnt umber in in select places. It's coming along quite nicely. This area here is a little brighter than I'd like it. And actually I pulled the dark down a little too far there too. But uh, I think I'm gonna tackle that in the next stage. So I can move back to the sleigh now. And this is looking a little brown. So I, th I think I'm gonna not just wash clear water over it, but instead use Let's try the bright red. That worked so nicely before. And I think on top of the, the kind of brown foundation that I've created, it could be just put the talk to order. This very light line here, that's a a line in the reflection. This this one here is a timber, um, and it's it it'll be toned down when I when I paint the, the timber the color that it should be. Um, but this one here, it, it's probably a little over over baked right right at the moment. But um, but I don't really want to make it red either. A couple of other really light reflections. And I think I'm going to do the same with them. Just avoid doing anything with them right now. We kick the decision down the road a little bit. This area here is a combination of really orangey red and almost white where the snow is reflecting on it. So a light red with maybe some yellow ochre or aureolin loaded into it might work quite nicely. I think I'll try the aureolin. This side of the sleigh right here is catching a lot of light too, so it's it's also quite orangey, so I think I will... I don't have a wet wash there, but I'll just glaze some aureole and over the, the red that I painted earlier. drop a little bit of the bright red into the top of it and let it flow. It was maybe a little more than I wanted and it killed the yellow. By using my brush to to wick up 
pool of paint. I can, I can actually manipulate the paint quite a bit. I can push it around and redistribute it at the same time that I'm um, getting the pool under under control. I think that once the once the the ironwork and the and the wooden staves and everything are painted in, I think that's going to read quite nicely as reflections. So once again, I've got quite a bit of, of wet paint here and I'm going to leave that alone and uh, I think that I will paint the socks. The socks are actually, they're white, but um, against the white of the snow that surrounds them, they're really not white. They're, they're kind of a, a warm gray. So let's use my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix, the more neutral mix one that leans a little bit towards burnt sienna. I'm going to mix up a, a really dilute pool, mostly water, just a little bit of pigment. But I still want these socks to read as, as white or off-white. I'm going to float a little bit of, mm, I think I'll float some raw sienna into the, the wet mix, the wet wash rather. So this is quite a bit darker than I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is paint the side of the, of the leg that's most in shadow and then dip my brush in the dirty side of my paint reservoir and pull paint from the passage that I just painted using the not so clean water. And that softens the edge and it brings the value down to something a lot closer to what I was shooting for. That's pretty good. It's a little cool, but that's all right. We're going to fix that in just a second. I want to try to get the, the shape right so it, it transitions nicely from ankle to, to hoof. the sock of the left foreleg. Can't see much of it, but I want what well, you can see to, to read properly. Alright, so now I've picked up a little bit of raw sienna. It's probably a lot stronger than I want it to be. I'll drop a little bit on the edge. Yeah, that looks pretty strong. So again, I'm going to put this on the, on the front side, the shadowed side. And that is much stronger than I want. By um, cleaning my brush off and using it to whip the pool of paint, I can tone down that overly strong raw sienna to a much more palatable value. And, um, and I can redistribute it too. So I'm moving a little bit of the, the raw sienna from the shadowed side where I painted it too strongly to the back side, which is sort of sunlit. And that looks pretty good. It's a little overly warm in some places, but I think it's pretty good actually. It's going to need a little bit of shading. That's even better. That's um, subtly different from the white of the paper that surrounds it, which will be the white of the snow. And it leaves me enough room value-wise to, to add in some, some subtle shadows to model the, the shape of the ankles of the socks. The sleigh is looking pretty good. And um, the horse is much closer to the color that I would like it to be. Probably still not quite there, but it's pretty close. There's one last thing I want to do here. This, the left side of the horse's chest is too light, but I wanted to save the distinct shadow line. That's much too dark. Dropping in some clear water, sort of clear water, and drying my brush off and wicking. That's much better. That's, now there's a subtle difference in value between the, 
the far side of the horse's chest and the center of the chest, which is in deeper shadow. All right, that's it for this session. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're enjoying this. If you are, please like my channel, like this video. I'd appreciate it if you shared this with people that you thought might be interested, and please subscribe. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.